The oil film in a tilt pad bearing is very thin, and this means the assembled clearances are critical. If the film is too thick, the stiffness decreases, affecting the stability of the rotor. If the film is too thin, oil shear can heat up the oil to the point where the babbit softens and starts to smear. The risk of particulate matter causing damage also increases with thin oil film. To achieve the proper assembled clearance, tilt pad bearings have features that allow for adjustments. We are comparing two 12-inch bearings for an exciter shaft. In the previous videos, we looked at the loading and forces on the bearing. This is the third video in a series from TRI Transmission and Bearing Corporation. In this video, we will examine how the replacement bearing from TRI improves the structure of the pads, pivots, and the way the assembled clearance is controlled. This four-pad OEM bearing has a history of damage caused by wear and vibration. Let's examine the pad adjustment screws in the contact area where the pads pivot. The screws have a spherical surface on the ends. They contact flat surfaces on the tilt pads. The bottom screws are adjusted at installation to move the lower pads up or down to achieve the proper rotor alignment. Once the proper alignment is achieved, the top adjusting screws are threaded to achieve the proper assembled clearance. This assembled clearance is measured with a lift check. When the screws are set, the bearing is removed and the screws are tack welded to prevent them from rotating and changing the assembled clearance. The TRI bearing is different. The assembled clearance is determined before being installed. The bearing is assembled on a fixture where the internals can be precisely measured. Pad support discs with backing shims determine the assembled clearance. They have flat surfaces and are easily ground on a surface grinder to achieve the proper distance from the center of the bearing. The boss on the back of the pad has a spherical surface that allows the pad to rock and tilt. No welding is necessary. On the outside of the bearing are saddle blocks with backing shims. At installation, the saddle block shims can be adjusted to achieve the proper rotor alignment. The assembled clearance is unaffected by alignment moves. The large flat surfaces in the TRI bearing create a more rigid assembly than the threaded and welded assembly of the OEM bearing. Let's look at the pads and consider the forces. The largest pressure is the force at the pivot. In the OEM bearing, this is the thinnest part of the pad. It is the thickest part of the TRI pad. The least amount of force is at the ends of the pads. This is where the OEM pads are the thickest and the TRI pads are the thinnest. As we saw in the last video, heavy pads with low geometric preloading leads to nose diving. This extra material also creates a large temperature gradient. The oil between the pads and the rotor heats up while the oil being pumped into the bearing keeps the outer surfaces of the pad cooler. A thinner pad reduces the temperature difference between the hot babbit and cooler steel. The extra material of the OEM pad also acts as an impediment to oil flow. The TRI bearing assembly is stiffer than the OEM bearing. The oil flow around the pads is much improved because of the pad geometry and the temperature gradient from the Babbitt surface to the cooler steel backing is reduced. These are just some of the improvements provided by the replacement bearing from TRI Transmission and Bearing Corporation. In the next video, we will take a closer look at assembly problems with the pivot points in the OEM bearing that arise during rotor alignment.